there! I'm about to share with you my five top tips for improving running technique. So quite handily, these tips can be encapsulated in the graceful acronym. Um, so each of the letters stand for something which I'm going to work through now. So the first of the letters is G for grow. Okay. So that is about trying to make your body as tall as possible when you're running. And the benefit of that is twofold. Okay. So basically your bodies are full of a sheet of fascia. And the more that you can extend that fascia, um, it, the more elastic energy that is available to you as you are running. So effectively this is free energy that you're making available. So if you imagine that you're kind of punched down, then that elastic band is not very stretched and you're not going to get any of that free recoil energy. Okay, whereas if you're tall, then it's much more available to you. Um, the second benefit of growing tall is to do with foot placement. So again, a lot of runners, they will sit when they run um, and that's as a result of our very sedentary lifestyles these days. So. Um, yeah, unbeknownst to us, we're a little bit sat back when we're running. Um, and then that encourages you to plant in front of your centre of mass, okay, which is this area here. And what you're doing there is that you're exerting a braking force into the ground. Um, so yeah, basically it's just slowing you down. It's in, um, meaning that you're going to have to then generate more energy to, to propel yourself forward. Whereas if you're nice and tall when you run, you have more space and time to land underneath your centre of mass so that all of the energy goes down, back and up. Okay. So yeah, very simply just trying to grow and extend your posture as you're running but without making it too rigid. Okay. So yeah, it's a graceful extension. Uh, the second point, it does relate to the first point because it's to do with rhythm and uh, getting more free energy from the elasticity that we talked about. So the optimal running rate for humans, in terms of how quickly our muscles naturally recoil, it equates to a running rhythm of about 180 strides a minute. Um, which, yeah, it, it will feel quite fast to a lot of people because most people tend to be around the 150 mark when they're running. Um, uh, but yeah, if you can just learn to be a little bit peppier when you're running um, and just pick up that rhythm ever so slightly, um, then then you, instead of kind of collapsing into the floor when you're running and all of that recoil energy just being absorbed up through the body, um, you learn to just let it ping you along the ground. Um, so yeah, rhythm about 180. It is a bit of a process to work up towards doing that. Um, Especially if you're if you're cold to start with, yeah, it just takes a little bit of time for the, the fibres to, to get warm to enable you to do that. Um, a lot of people are concerned as well if they suddenly increase their, their rhythm that, that they're going to go way, way faster and they won't be fit enough to be able to maintain that rhythm. But what will happen actually is your stride will cut as a result, which is not a bad thing, okay, because it's much more efficient, puts much less strain through the body to have a small light stride than it does to overstride um, when you're running. Okay. Um, so we have grow, we have rhythm, and next is alignment. And this helps you to tap into another free source of energy, this time from gravity. Okay, so another key mistake that we make when we run is that we're out of alignment. Um, so that could be bending forward at the waist, or it could be going too much side to side. Okay, so you want to try and imagine that your body is like a plank when you are running, and that you are tilting that plank forward from the ankles. And then it essentially turns running into a controlled fall. Uh, now some people tense up a little bit when they think about falling, but if you think about falling forward and up, then it, you, you almost feel like you're getting this helping hand behind you that's pushing you along. And then you don't then have to generate as much energy uh, yourself. Um, so yeah, thinking about that, that so as I say, strong plank, but tilting forward at the ankles, that will open up gravity to you as a source of energy. On to C for circle now, and this helps to tie in a lot of the first three points. So if you get all of those three points um, working properly, then it will create a much smoother gait. Okay, so C for circle, you've got to try and imagine 
so your legs are like a wheel underneath you so your body is pretty much a train carriage um, and as much as possible if you can get that sense of a smooth wheel underneath you just tick tick ticking along um, then it will just as I say it's more about the feel for this one it will just feel so much nicer <laughs> for want of a better word <laughs> uh, and you'll run much more efficiently uh, and much faster um, so yeah, the, the prompt that I give for this one is to feel for the wheel with your heels. So when people think of that, they'll often sort of try and then draw this like really forced wheel, okay? But the thing to, that, that it will actually feel like is that you're just lifting your heels up behind you, okay? So because you're moving forward, it will naturally draw that circle basically. So it's just keying into those heels and your body will tell you how high you need to lift your heels. If you're running faster, it'll be higher because your circle will be, will be bigger. Okay, if it's slower, then it's just a small raise. So yeah, as I say, don't be afraid just to listen to what your body is telling you in that respect. And then finally, the fifth point um, is in some ways the most important. Okay, it's not so much about biomechanics, this one. It is more to do with your mental approach to running and that is to just enjoy it. Um, so, so often people are like, I don't know, they, they just sort of see running as a means to an end and uh, to lose weight or, you know, as, as a, uh, you see people out running and it just does not look like they're enjoying it. It's like it's sort of penance and, and, you know, they sort of think that no pain, no gain. Um, whereas, uh, in, invariably, that, that just leads to injury breakdown, to not enjoying it, demotivating, Whereas if you put enjoyment first as your first priority, then you are far more likely to run with a better technique, um, but yeah, also to then keep wanting to do it as well. Um, so sometimes I say to people if they're struggling with, with motivation, um, is to say, just to say to yourself before you go out the door that you're just gonna go for a walk. Okay, be wearing your running kit, but you're just gonna go for a walk. And then before you know it, you've started to run. Okay, so that'll just help you to get out the door. And nobody ever regrets the run once they're out there running and once you're back. All right. Um, another nice way to think of things as well is instead of thinking, oh no, this is going to be a hard run, I'm going to push myself hard. Okay, it's just to listen to your body and to let the effort come to you. Uh, and that will just create, again, much more relaxation in your body and you will definitely enjoy it more. Um, so, yeah, hopefully. Uh, there's not too much to think about there, but obviously there's, there's the five points, the grow, the rhythm, alignment, circle and enjoy. If all else fails and you're out in a run and you just can't remember what the different points are, just think about the full movement and is it feeling graceful, okay? So that last bit, the full, that's the bit to go back to, is it graceful? Um, and yeah, I hope, I hope that really helps you to... Um, to enjoy running more and to eventually run faster and without any injuries. Okay, thank you for listening. Any questions then please just get in touch.